Hello everyone. Today's recipe is one that comes to me from my maternal grandmother. A recipe for a hot milk cake that I had copied down from my mom's recipe box and had with me and one day I looked at it and said, you know, I really like chai and chai is a kind of tea with spices and milk. So what if I married these two things together for the party I'm going to tonight? Thus was born my chai milk cake instead of hot milk cake. And I'll take you through the ingredients and the steps, but first for the chai, there are several methods you can use. And I've looked through my tea cabinet today and found it's really full of stuff I can make chai out of. As a matter of fact, I don't actually like a lot of kinds of tea. There are a few herbal ones I like, but if I'm having real tea, it's pretty much always better with spice and milk in it. So here are some methods that I have in my cabinet right now for making chai. Uh, I have this, I have this yellow label tea that I bought a big thing of from India, imported in China, and then brought home with me in this Tupperware, and actual tea masala spices, which is really nice to have, but uh, I don't know if you can get those at a store near you. That's really great. Another time, I was at a fancy restaurant in the U.S. and they had various tins of tea, including this lovely masala chai mix which has all sorts of stuff. So it's a good one to use. I don't actually like the flavor mixture that much when I'm drinking it, but it's fun to use when I'm preparing something like this to bake with. Probably the one you're most likely to have is a tea bag, either of just plain black tea. This is the Bigelow English Tea Time. I keep an assortment of their stuff around for guests, and it says the ingredients are just black tea, so there you go. Uh, and then you'll put in some spices. What kind of spices? Well, you may ask. According to my two pre-made mixes, there's a good deal of overlap. Uh, one of them has nutmeg, the other one has cinnamon but they both agree about cloves, cardamom, black pepper, and ginger in that order from largest to smallest amounts. So I'd say throw each of those together. I put all six in honestly in whatever ratio you think you would enjoy. And then the simplest and easiest one, which unfortunately is kind of hard to come by in America, is powdered milk tea. I love these things. It's a Chinese thing. You get them in a little sleeve. They also have little coffee pouches like this as well, but this one's just milk tea and you pour it in with hot water and you have your milk tea. So I'm going to be using some of this to give even more tea flavor to the dry ingredients, but sometimes I'll make chai with it just with a little canister of spices that I keep around and I would keep these in my desk and then I could have chai whenever I wanted. I even discovered, poking around in my tea cabinet, that I forgot my neighbor gave me a couple of chai pouches last year. It's got a tea bag and a cinnamon stick and some other spices in it. So I could use that as well. I used one of them and it was good. I just forgot the other one was back there. These do make a good gift though, as soon as the person you give it to doesn't forget she has it. <laughs> so, ready to make some chai cake? Here are the ingredients and the materials you'll need besides the tea and spice. One thing I should mention is that my grandmother's recipe is a little small. So first for equipment, if you're thinking of something like this, the 9 by 13, you can double the recipe. Her recipe actually said on it, double for birthdays. I'm going to use a smaller pan. I love this little thing from Ikea. It's about half the size, so it fits really well. I don't want a lot of leftovers or they're just going to end up in my stomach. And this is about all the group I'm going to tonight will probably eat. So double the recipe for a full-size cake, or use a smaller pan for this recipe. The other equipment you will need includes a whisk, a rubber spatula, and an electric mixer would really be good if you have one, otherwise you'll be beating a long time by hand, measuring cups and measuring spoons, a small saucepan, and then a strainer if you have any loose tea or loose spices going in your milk, and three small bowls. The ingredients come in three slightly overlapping groups. First, the dry ingredients, flour, salt, baking powder, and a bit of spice. Also the milk tea powder, if you're using that like I am. Then there's the hot ingredients, which is milk, almond milk in my case. Some more tea and spice. I'm using the tinned mix for this. 
And then once that's brewed and strained out, you're going to put in the butter to melt with that and the vanilla. And then finally, the third grouping is just the eggs and sugar. You'll need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Step one, measure the dry ingredients. Now we get to make the chai. The recipe calls for a half a cup of milk, but since the tea is going to soak up some of it, and the pot of course will claim a little, I'm going to put in half a cup, and then I'm going to fill it about halfway again, and put that in as well. Now this tin of chai says three heaping teaspoons for eight ounces of water, mixed then with eight ounces of milk. Hmm. So that's like two servings, but I want this to be nice and strong, so I'll go ahead and use the whole three teaspoons. Turn the heat on. You do want it to heat up in less than forever, but be careful if you don't put it on low heat, because you don't want the milk to scald. Come and stir it from time to time. Once you start to see any steam or bubbles, turn this down low so it doesn't burn, but keep it heating for a little while. The tea looks about ready. Or I mean the milk. Now if you used real tea leaves like I did, you need a strainer as well as your measuring cup. You also kind of need three hands. <laughs> I'm glad I did as much as I did. That almost doesn't fill the half cup. <laughs> Gonna get the rest of the gunk out of here. And then put the milk back in. So that it can melt the butter. Now if you put the butter in with the warm milk, maybe put it back on the heat just the lowest setting. It should all be melted together by the time you're ready to add it to the other ingredients. And don't forget to put in the vanilla. And now for the eggs and sugar. You're going to start by separating the eggs. You're going to beat them separately and then together. Not as in this egg and this egg, but the yolks in one bowl, the whites in another. Actually reverse that order, do the whites first so they'll whip up. Then the yolks. Then combine them, and then put in the sugar. The ingredients say to beat it a lot. They say five minutes. Of course, that's probably with a hand whisk or a spoon. So if you're using an electric mixer like I am, you probably don't need to beat it quite that long. Great. 
see, it doesn't want to open. Shoot. Well, that didn't work very well. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't work the way they usually do. I, en I ended up with most of the white in the bowl with the yolk, because otherwise I was going to end up with the yolk in with the white. And again, the egg is not breaking right. I'll beat you each apart. I'll beat you both together. Okay, that's not quite the line from the Princess Bride, but... I'll beat you each apart. I'll take you both together. Seems like it. You should end up with a mixture like this that seems sort of smooth and velvety. Generally, you put in the dry ingredients next. So I put in about a third of the flour mixture. Actually, I put in more like half by mistake. <laughs> These things happen. Fold it into the nice creamy sugar mixture. Yep, the butter's dissolved, so I'm going to put in about half of this. And then I'll alternate. Supposedly another third of the flour, the rest of the liquid, and then another, the last third of the flour. I'll probably just put all the flour in next time since I put so much in the first. Okay batter's about ready. Looks consistent. We don't want to overdo it since we are doing dealing with flour here that has gluten in it. You don't want a chewy cake. One last thing I'm going to do is wipe a little oil around the inside of the pan, pour in the batter, and pop it in the oven. Ready to go in the oven. Don't forget to set a timer. Depends on how deep it is. Anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes. I'm going to go with 30 because it's kind of deep in my pan. Put a toothpick in the middle. See, does it come out clean? Yep, it's done!